The gentleman from Indiana, Mr. Hollingsworth, is now recognized for five minutes. Morning, it's a pleasure to speak with you again. Before we get started on my questions, I just wanted to comment on Representative Axney's testimony or conversation or questions. I love the fact that she's beginning to recognize how heavy the regulatory burden has been in the refining space that has led to an underinvestment in the Biden war on energy, especially on American produced energy continues to bear the fruit that they expected. And that is a deep concern for Americans that are paying more at the pump. We collectively find ourselves in the present situation because we fail to anticipate the future, even if that future is inherently uncertain and probabilistic. You said a few moments ago, we have a job to do on demand. I like that. And in the recent past and present, the policy signals I feel like have been unambiguous for the Fed. Inflation's at a 40-year high. The labor market is robust. Unemployment bouncing along multi-decade lows. Economic growth has been very high. But I worry that that lucidity is a luxury that is fleeting. I believe the future will be more ambiguous as we head into a time where economic growth seems to be approximately zero and labor market weakness is beginning to emerge. I think those policy signals will be less clear going forward. Economic growth in Q1 was negative, albeit for reasons I think you called technical in nature, but still negative nonetheless. Q2 economic growth is currently projected to be approximately zero according to the GDP Now tracker and many economists. Weakness in the labor market, while nascent, is beginning to emerge. Still yet, inflation as a lagging indicator remains, as you put earlier this week, very, very high. I've certainly praised the Fed's tardy yet sudden total focus on price stability, which will come, as you said, at the cost of aggregate demand reduction. Technical reasons or not, America will feel aggregate demand reduction where GDP growth is already zero as a recession. So I am curious to hear your thought process in an environment where inflation is steadying and or coming down, but still yet at multiples of your target and unemployment is escalating quickly and economic growth is negative. Tell me a little bit about how you'll think about that environment and approach that from a policy and rate setting perspective. I, I guess I'd start by saying that that's not the environment <clears throat> we see or expect. We actually do think that growth this year and the second half of this year should still be fairly strong. It is coming down from the very high reopening levels of last year, but uh, the first quarter was, was somewhat anomalous. Private spending was was actually at a very healthy. Tell level. me about how you'll think about that environment. I assume that you could be correct, but there's a chance you could be incorrect about that soft landing prediction. So the the way our tools work, what we're trying to achieve is <clears throat> is to have a moderation in demand so that supply can catch up, mm -hmm. and so that that'll take pressure off of off of resource utilization right. and inflation can come down. That's what we're right. trying to achieve. But if inflation will come happen, down after that fact. Demand will come down first. Inflation will lag that, where inflation remains that's right. multiples of your target. But unemployment, because of that sagging demand, goes up. Economic growth is depressed because of that sagging demand. Tell me how you'll think about that environment. So that, the way we think about it from a policy standpoint is we're, of course, we raise interest rates and shrink the balance sheet. That affects broad financial conditions. Indeed. And that affects the economy. So we'll, the question we'll be asking is, is you know, is our policy rate, that's the thing we control, is it at the right level so that it's affecting financial conditions in the economy in the way that we need and intend? <clears throat> and I want to know how you will intend to affect them where unemployment is going up and economic growth is negative, but inflation remains high. Well, I, I, th I think you would, I mean, in that hypothetical situation, I yeah. think you would say that, that that would be a setting in which inflation could be expected to come down. We, as I've said, we'd, we'd like to see inflation coming down as well. Right. So the question is, you've got so choices. So you could move you rates could, down or steady rate escalations in advance of inflation hitting your target as long as you saw it sure. beginning to come down if economic conditions or your other mandate, full employment, begin to show weakness. As one of my colleagues used to say, at every meeting, it's, it's the same question. Do you raise, leave them the same, or bring them down mm -hmm. rates? Right. So I think, you know, once I, I think uh, we'd have to see what's happening. We'll try to make good judgments in real time. Right. But the, the main thing is we can't fail on this. We, we really have to get inflation down to 2 percent. So we're going to want to see evidence that it really is coming down before we declare any kind of victory. And so I think we'd be reluctant to cut 
Well, this will have real cost to Americans, so I want to make sure that we're forward thinking about what is going on in the real economy, not just watching a lagging indicator that is inflation. And with that, I'll yield back. Thank you. The gentleman from New Jersey.